Uh, we'll go down to the hourly on BTC. You know, this is where all the juice is. This is where all the action is. When we kicked off on Sunday, um, we were right here, I think. So we were talking about kind of the first, the first visit into this zone here. And this being a potential resistance point for BTC at that very early stage, you know, really, really positive sign now in terms of the fact that we are continuing to hold this resistance. It continues to add a lot more weight to the level itself. So we always like the level to be um, interacted with a lot and show clear signs that the market is reacting in and around the level that we have mapped out. And I think we're getting a pretty good, a pretty good understanding and, and sense of that at this point in time. Um, so 21.5 looks like the key area for BTC to have to break through if it has any any dreams of challenging up into the you know the 22.7s and beyond. Yeah, the hourly close over 21.570. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the case. And so you know I saw somebody somebody earlier saying like please please don't be the person that thinks this is going to pop to the upside. The continued pressure here, you would believe that to be the case. So the continued pressure up against this 21.5, you would certainly believe that to be the case. BTC continues to be weak in comparison to alts. Alts have already moved significantly. They've had four hour bullish divergences and they've played out really, really nicely to, to the upside. Some really good percentage gains in, in the alt side of things. And even ETH made a far better run against its, its range highs in this consolidation region versus BTC. You know, it's really just, you know, continues to be a garbage coin, really. So looking for a close above 21.5 and then hopefully some some momentum to the upside and you know this little cluster over here at 22.7 is definitely kind of on the cards in terms of where we can get back up to coincides with pretty much the bottom of this region here a lot of reaction around this 22.7 region in this cluster so it basically ties us in with getting back up there. It would then also freeze out anything up into the 23.2s in terms of either escaping position or building position around that level. But I think if we start to break out of 21.5, then you know we should be looking towards this 22.7 zone through here. Again, that's on the basis this does break out. If it fails to break out and we continue trading in this region here, then we've already had plenty of attempts at the upside. Then I would suspect that we'll take uh, we'll take aim at some of these downside lows here, and right now just traveling in this consolidation range. So lower time frame range in conditions, higher time frame downtrending market. So really now just in a position where we're we're waiting for the next move within this consolidation range. Upside breakout twenty two point seven. Failure to break out, then obviously I think taking out the lows here initially at 20.9 would be absolutely on the cards. Then you start to move down to the, the 20.7s, and as soon as you get to the 20.7s, you also bring in this region from here as well. So that's where things start to get a little bit more uncomfortable from BCC's perspective. So I suspect for now it will continue the, the attack on the upside and try and make that breakout play um you know to the upside yeah you think it all depends on power speech yeah and i think there's data data release tomorrow as well so i suspect the market is going to be a little bit more choppy until then um you know we've kind of i've got the narrative head on i think that if the markets if the markets pump into the pump into the data and they pump into um you know powell speaking then i always kind of take that as more of a negative sign uh, I think most of the moves that we've seen from the market so far have, uh, have actually done kind of the opposite pre-event. And so they've always been kind of fade moves into the events. So we'll see if PCC tries to make this drive prior to any meaningful, uh, meaningful data or discussion. And I think, you know, the indexes look as though they're going to bounce through here as well, which, you know, may be a positive for crypto, uh, you know, in this region. So I think we've got, you know, some pretty good pretty good confluence here for the for the index move taking out the low cluster here at, at 4110 and now it's starting to make a move and i think 4200s are probably on the cards from this region that kind of 50 dollar move up here thoughts on rising open interest and declining spot in this resistance feels bearish to me it to me it doesn't really matter it didn't really matter about kind of you know those two particular criteria that you've um kind of picked up on for me, the market is bearish just because of the the nature of the downtrend that we're in. So, you know, I would I would always call this market bearish at this moment in time. And I think that all of everything that's happening through these regions are squeezes 
attempts to stop shorts out pushes higher into breakdown regions again so for me it's all kind of just part of a a bearish um bearish push i think the conditions are fine at the moment right like the conditions aren't too bad right now i mean big boy atom is is doing good things big boy atom continues to push and drive and make its make its attempts at higher i did a stream last night for haven so we had a we had a nice little hour and a half discussion last night in the haven on kind of the atom picture through here i think it's you know great looking a great looking uh great looking chart the problem that we have is the curse of atom everybody knows about the the cosmos curse you know as soon as atom shows strength it's typically a top for a market it was pretty much the ender of the bull run you know atom attempted to move last and then that that failure and weakness was then just completely undone and any times that atom has shown a lot more strength than the rest of the market then we have tended to uh to puke shortly after from a 12 hour chart perspective the very simple play for me through here is if atom closes a 12 hour above this range then i have to be long on it right this is the um the point if we if we get a 12 hour close then basically this is the play you're looking for like 16 dollars plus because that's when you start to run into some heavy areas from the left hand side of the chart so you're looking for like 16 dollars plus but i couldn't sit on the sidelines knowing that atom had broken out of a had broken out of a significant level and i just sat there and done nothing so the 12 hour close above here is is really important for me i think if that happens then atom can potentially have a run especially if the rest of the market chooses this period to recover if atom chooses to run the highs and then come back inside the range obviously then you're out of position because you don't want to fuck around with this once it's completed that move i think you're afforded the best the best risk reward around this zone here because it gives you the gives you a really nice stopping point and it gives you a really great potential upside if we're talking about the 16 17 push so yeah i mean it's a good um it's a good thought process i think for atom and then you're looking for the the push obviously if you're on the the bullish side of this as i'm going to run the highs and shit the bed in good atom fashion i think that is a, absolutely a very sensible line of thought process to take i still think that is a very very sensible thought process to have for atom the high that we made on the 12 hour close today wasn't quite enough to sweep everything but it did take out this high cluster here and obviously we had a very strong reaction i think that's absolutely a fine line to take in terms of what you are potentially waiting for the one thing that i would say is that if you are waiting for atom to run the highs you need to be very clear on the reaction from that right so like running highs is a very clear and obvious action of the market it is not something that we tend to like hang around for we don't tend to kind of you know continue to revisit those highs it tends to be just a very volatile and ruthless play you know and the example is the example is xtz okay, that's the that's the example is the xtz high run took out the entire cluster closed below sold off puked it's a very clear signal when things start hanging around for longer it becomes slightly more awkward now there could be signs on the lower time frame based on this hourly picture that yes that is indeed what is what we're going to look at doing doesn't necessarily mean it's complete at this moment in time doesn't necessarily mean that the best signal is right now the best signal is probably actually on a breakdown and shorting into the downside momentum because if you did that on, e on xtz you, you still made bank here right so actually i think the same is true of atom that if you're looking to short this then it's best on the to catch this on the downside than it is to try and to try and get too tricky with positioning up here. Unless you're presented with a very clear opportunity in terms of stopping distance and you know a tight setup, I would try and play into the downside. Triple bear deer forming on the four hour for Atom. Yeah, and again that could coincide with the fact that BTC will make the push, try and clear out some of the range, and then and then fall back down. But yeah, agreed on agreed in terms of the structure here, and you can see it on the hourly. So you can see it here on the hourly. You know, this is just the the wider representation of that divergence, but you can see it through here, right? 
Do you have a price in mind for ETH at which point you would consider buying a bag of spot? Above 1700 So closes back above um, 1700 I think, uh, you know, important. So being back above 1700 I think is important. And then lower down, I think, into the 1200s. That's, that's kind of first thoughts based on not knowing very much and seeing where we are currently. So it's either stabilization above 17, 1700 or it's down to the 1200s. Can CHZ be a good short? I wouldn't touch it on the short side. It's way too strong. You know, I'm not I'm not interested in shorting CHZ through a region like this. I think TRB gave a far better signal uh, and less interested about shorting this. I think that longing any touches down to uh, 223 are probably still the play for now. So I think if, you know, you take this level through here, you get this cool off here and you get down into this level, then I think this probably becomes the long opportunity again. There's nothing here yet that would make me want to short. You've got the potential for a one-day divergence above these highs, but it's way, st it's way too early to um, to kind of do anything with. Right? It's way too early. We're just we're just on the first day after this this high creation, so it's it's really not the time to start uh, start moving in. EOS short underwater. Listen, we said last stream you shouldn't be short in EOS. We said it was going to two dollars. Ran up pretty nicely into that zone. You know, this this region here from the 190s upwards, it ran up really nicely into there. But again, this I don't think yeah, there's still not anything that I could take as a short signal through here. Like literally nothing. Zero short signal. Aside from the aside from the test up here, in terms of just a simple resistance play, there's no additional confluence I have for that. Rune. A good breakout on the hourly. This is like the BTC chart. So good breakout there. Supply cluster here. Starting to get overextended. Maybe a bit of consolidation and another drive. Then you want to see the hold up here. Good breakout for sure on Rune. Clear boundaries for a trade. Area that I think we'll probably struggle at and reject from. Overextension already. Divergences into here. I'd look at opening shorts. Target being the bottom level here at 220. Retest into 220 first. You're probably looking at playing the upside into this 230. Some pretty decent boundaries for Rune. Just simple, simple stuff. Do you think the PAYC floor dropping is a good ape short indicator? I mean, like ape has been a short for a long period of time. This whole run here is just scammy garbage trash. But it was also one of the markets that reacted and performed poor, poorly for like a, a bigger portion of time than the other markets. So actually, you know, Ape did its run slightly sooner and then started selling off while the other markets were kind of stronger. I think there's a decent chance this runs up higher into the 570s. But um, I'm not necessarily sure the BOYC floor dumping, uh, dropping is a good short indicator in itself. Should we look at coin slash ETH or coin slash BTC for trading? I look, I took the EOS ETH position impulsively looking only at that chart. That's completely up to you. Like if you want to understand, you know, what it, what is the strength of Alt A versus Alt B, then absolutely fine. You know, I know a lot of people take uh, value in that from things like a Sol ETH chart, or in your case, the, the EOS ETH chart. Like, that's absolutely fine. If that adds additional confluence to your thought process, then there's no there's no concerns with doing that. Um, I, the only thing I would say is just make sure that, like, it lines up with the cash pair looking good. So if the, if the cash pair looks good, then you get the additional confluence from any alt pairings uh, and comparison charts also looking good. So you really want to just make sure that they are kind of married up. Can you explain the four hour bull div that played out on CRV? Um, yeah, I don't even need a chart for it. You had a you had a standard four hour bull div. Uh, sorry, the market then came down and made a higher low and then we rallied. So you had a four hour bull div into a change of market structure into a strong rally. What can I do to uh, improve my entries? What I'd first ask yourself is, are your entries the problem, right? Like, are your entries the problem? A lot of people, the entry isn't the problem because a lot of the time entries are just kind of an ego boost we give ourselves to making sure the number looks pretty and it kind of feels good from an internal clout perspective. 
usually the problem people have is actually their targets. It's not really their entries, it's their targets and their length of hold, their ability to hold, their management of a trade, their exiting of the position. That's usually the, the issue. Do you sometimes hedge a position that is in profit instead of closing it? Yes. Especially from a swing trade perspective. If I paid a lot of attention to a certain market and then I see a I see a, an appropriate setup develop that is counter my existing position, then yes, I would be happy to take a hedge play on that. Uh, CBS, did you have the mentality in the early days of trading when you lose money, you think of what you could have done with that instead? Yeah, like that's so that's a really a really, really common one. It's a really common thought process of self-punishment from a trading perspective. Like you lose money in a trade and, you know, let's say like you lose, you lose 500 bucks or so. There, there are a couple of things that traders tend to do. They start to equate that money into real world things. They tend to, they tend to start making the comparisons. So people will be like... Shit, I could have bought a PS5 with that losing trade. Shit, I could have booked a holiday with that trade. And they start making the comparisons to things that they could have purchased or things they could have done with that money. And it's just a self-punishment tactic. It really is just a self-punishment tactic. It's, uh, it's a way of, I think, trying to add some stability in terms of getting you to rationalize and appreciate Maybe you're making bad decisions. Maybe you're not trading in the correct way. Maybe you're using too much leverage. So usually it's underpinned by the fact that you might be kind of on the larger side of what your account can support. But yes, it's uh, it's a pretty common thing for people to to do that. This is indeed punishing myself for the losing trades instead of moving on. What you said is giving me some awareness. Yeah. Like again, you know, somebody else said it in the chat, you know, they said like, I'm, I'm putting forwards $500 in an attempt to win $2,000. And like, that's the way you need to think about it. You know, it's like what you're doing is you're looking at furthering your portfolio, your trading balance by taking some educated stabs at the markets. And you can always expect to lose some of those positions, some of those trades. And so you have to have the awareness that losing is is part and parcel of the process. And don't punish yourself about, about the losses. The only time that you should be punishing yourself is if you are performing poorly and... Um, like you need to find out the reason you're performing poorly. If you're just like taking trades because someone tweeted about something, if you're taking trades that are way over leveraged, if you are, if your risk is way too high, if you're in a mindset of trying to make it all back and just trading, you know, basically stupidly, okay, just be careful not to use another word there. If you're trading stupidly by, you know, being aggressive, not really having a plan, just smacking buttons to try and make your money back, then at that point, it's also a good kind of uh, rationalization point. If you are just trying to trade and implementing your knowledge and your thought process and following TA and following risk, then it's fine. Yeah, this is nice. The hourly is bouncing really nicely through here. Um, and yeah, I saw somebody call out, uh, 1.375 I think as you can see here it's pretty much the exact zone that I've got mapped out it's the kind of the key area for for OP through here it's maybe a little bit further maybe 142 if it gets really aggressive so another 10% from here but we're still looking still looking for the move back down to under a dollar really good divergence from from OP at the lows and very similar to CRV in terms of the creation of the higher low here before the impulse and the movement away and good rotation here on on this hourly you know really nice position for the hourly to be in showing this impulse here at the 50 level holding on nicely to this little cluster of support at 125 and the four hour also looking in a pretty nice position so i think you're looking for the 137s and then i think you're probably if you you know if you want to try and keep some of the position then i think you're probably looking to the 142s if you want to try and squeeze a little bit more value from that yeah so again i i think it's like the TRB thought process has always been revolving around the 42 level. I think I've been very, very clear about this thought process, certainly in the Haven where I've been discussing this religiously for a week. I think all of this price action here is distribution. I think this whole area is uh, TRB distributing up here. I think that this is representative of people getting out of their positions, taking profit on what has been a very aggressive market up from the lows. And I think this represents where the selling and the bulk of the selling is happening. You can see the divergences represented on both here, right? Um, 
on the RSI in terms of every higher high here has actually been a lower high on the RSI. You can see that this particular area of price action has been just been one huge momentum divergence on the awesome oscillator. I think that this move here is an overthrow. I think that it is weakness against the $42 level. I think it was the final hurrah. We took out the high over here and then we died promptly after doing that. 42 is a very important level for TRB. You can see all the way through this region here that this is where it's been respected time after time anything that's traded above 42 has been sold into you know very aggressively but 42 is the level in which it's been absolutely shut down time after time then you get your scam leg here we retest 42 with support we move higher we then finally lose 42 and then we're dead like that's the hope it's a very very like I, I can cover this chart in two seconds in a very in-depth manner because I've spent so much time with this so the loss of 42 is a significant marker because we should be holding that level the fact that we have failed to hold that level after breaking out along with all of the higher time frame divergences that we're seeing here and the slowdown leads me to believe this is probably a top yeah and the very simple the very simple logic is you're long above 42 and you're short below it I think this chart is a great looking setup. I think this is the overthrow scenario, just like we got on ETH, where we move, look as though we're breaking up, we fail, we come straight back down inside, we fall out the bottom, and now this is gonna come down here. Right, and the setup is the setup is very simple. Like from my perspective, what's my entry? 43.33. So like whatever, it's like here. And we're running like this for now because we don't want to see it back above 42 anyway. And then just aiming for as low as possible, like taking the 50%. That's basically the, the thought process. So the theta position looks pretty good at 125. Looks to be the breakout, very similar to Rune. Um, and then I think I actually think the trouble area is 126. So I, I don't know how much value you want to try and get from this, but I think 126 is the first struggle point. Obviously, if it breaks that, then there's definitely the potential for, for the move into the 130s. But I do think it has to get past this little cluster here first. Again, just like BTC, you've got a really nice boundary for, for this trade, for the Theta trade. So you can either play into the breakout here, you know, and then you're looking for something that you know, looks like this. You would try and have, you would have to relieve uh, some of the position here in order to protect this stopping distance and then see if we get the increase you're looking for probably i would target somewhere in these lows i don't necessarily think you get the full move up here so i would probably target somewhere into here and then if you do get the impulse away then i would start to tighten up the stop as well so the ideal scenario for tightening the stop here would be move into here take some profit off the position theta comes down retest this bounces makes a fresh high here and then at this point in time you can then slide the stop up to underneath this low protect the position and then aim for your, your six percent that would be the the thought process that i would employ for this for someone with a smaller account would you recommend scalping or swing trading to grow your portfolio if you want to learn how to trade i'd recommend moving into the scalping side of things if you want to learn how to be a better investor i'd recommend the swing trading side of things that's pretty much the way I would split it. For a new trader, what is a good ratio of wins to losses? One to two, one to four. It doesn't really matter. Like your win percentage is largely irrelevant as long as your risk is managed. Um, so like the account I did um, recently was I did 10K to 10K to like, I don't know, what was it? Like 80, 82K, 10K to 82K. My win rate was one in five. So it was like, I think it was 19% was my win rate, but I still did 10 to 80 in I think just over a week. So it, it doesn't really doesn't really matter too much. Um, it does depend on your style of trading, and it depends on your your management to your risk, because you're not going to be able to survive. You know, if it's if it's something that you are taking 20% win rate on and you're over risking, then you're not going to be able to survive that that process. When you're happy with your profits in a swing trade and you expect the market to move against the position for a while, you go delta neutral, lock in the profit until it goes in your direction again? Yes. And then depending on the position, I'm also looking at scaling into the swing trades, you know, um, in a in a heavier way. So like if we take like TRB, for example, 
you know, I would be happy to hedge the position on TRB in terms of how much it's pushed to the downside and then looking at re-adding to the short swing position once I think we've extended or, or you know, come to the end of the bounce. Were the trades in your account you went 10 to 80k mostly scalps? They were, yeah, they were mostly scalps. But the other thing to keep in mind is that every couple of months we get like very good market conditions, right? We get very good market conditions every couple of months. So while, while yes, it looks great for me to say did 10 to 82k or whatever in, in a week, the, the reality of that is that I had very fortunate market um, market conditions in order to do so, right? We had a period of time where alts were just massively green day after day, and it was just about picking the right alt at the right time. Right? That was it. Now, we get these periods of time every couple of months where suddenly there's like this mini alt season for a week and everything just pops off and it's just right place, right time. But there's also a lot to be said about just basing your trading around those periods of easy trades. So... Can you spot those periods without being active all the time though? Yes. Because like they're based on two things. So they're based usually on higher time frame setups. So, you know, when this when this period of time started, we were at things like daily bull divs, three-day bull divs, right? So the higher time frame picture supported upside kind of relief. And then it's very easy to spot once the markets start to have those big days. So if you notice, ever since we did the, the sell-off on BTC and ETH, we've really not done anything too crazy in terms of um, green days, right? The green percentage days have been pretty muted. So it's a combination of factors. You know, we had a higher time frame set up that supported the fact that when we got green days, they were going to stick around. And so it's a little combo, a little combo play. What strategy did you use for the 10k account? Diversion SSR, order blocks, um, breakouts, pretty much primarily. So consolidation breakouts, RSI resets, um, was pretty much the primary primary thought process. Everything was up, and right, so everything was up, and all I was looking at doing was playing into the next legs up on all of the markets whenever we had a consolidation and breakout uh, breakout attempt. And then it's just also uh, submitting entirely to the to the the kind of the twenty IQ market conditions, because that's the other thing you you have to just submit to the market. So you um, a lot of people will see markets pumping, and instead of getting onto the long side, they'll they'll find thirty different reasons why it's all a scam. Right, so they'll they'll do they'll put like thirty different indicators on a chart. They'll they'll start using order flow. They'll start you know, and then they'll start calling out why it's fake, why it's not a real pump, why it's going to reverse, why you should fade it. Like instead of just submitting to the market and being like the market is very green, and we're now breaking out of a consolidation again. Like just get long. Right, so many people tend to tend to do that does the amount of touches at this resistance on btc give any clue as to what the direction is more likely well you would say upside is more likely the only concern that you would have is sweeping the highs and then rejecting again but this level is important either way because this level is either the um is either the breakout and move or it's the failure get back inside and it's the short option been mostly swing trading for a while now wanting to get into scalping what time frame should i start with it really depends on you um and like the approach that you want to take because i'm a big i'm a big fan of not using any time frames and simply using tick charts because i'm slightly more aggressive in terms of if i want to be actively involved in in scalping i think there shouldn't be a time frame preference i think the 15 minute is a really nice sweet spot for anybody who is looking at trading on a kind of intraday perspective I think the 15 minute is a really nice sweet spot chart. It's not too aggressive. It gives really nice setups. It gives really clean levels. And so it really does provide you with a, you know, a really good opportunity to take some day to day trades versus, um, you know, trying to be hyper aggressive and play things that are kind of, you know, based over 15 minutes. You know, you can play a chart that instead will set you up with a trade for the rest of the day. And I think that's uh a far better outcome any thoughts on placing trades on both directions when the market moves sideways and volatility compresses from your experience is it profitable just long volatility like just find a move contract and just long volatility if that's what you're that's what you're interested in doing so if you think there's going to be an expansion but you don't know which way it's going to go just get long on volatility as a whole um 
far too many cases of getting stopped out on both sides of a, of a trade for that. So a lot of people try and go long and short, they get wicked on their short or they close their short because price breaks out and then price instantly reverses and dumps. And so you just end up losing two trades instead of capitalizing on what you think is, you know, a positive event. So just get long on volatility. That's all you need to do. Do you find a one hour close through resistance to be significant? Well, it, 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 the one hour close is where we're looking for because this level is drawn on the one hour, right? So therefore, the one hour is significant because I'm charting the one hour time frame. I could also take this as a 15 minute level because I think it's equally good on the 15 minute chart. So I could take this as a 15 minute breakout through here. The, the significance is where did you draw the level from? Where is the cleanest level you can draw? And ideally, what is the lowest time frame you can use with that significant level? If this, if this theta chart was like this on the 15 minute, right? And we were trying to say that this is a level through here, then obviously that's that's not correct. When you have a really nice fit to a level where you've got really good interaction at multiple points with a lower time frame level, then you can use the 15 minute if you want to plan a breakout. What advice would you give to someone who is consistently profitable about increasing size? Just increase size. Um, don't be a pussy. Appreciate that money is just a percentage of uh, your portfolio. So losses, etc., they're just percentage, uh, percentage weighted against your portfolio. So if previously you were losing, you know, you would take a three percent risk of a trade, and three percent to you was a hundred bucks, and now it's four hundred bucks. It's still only three percent. So only think in percentage terms, right? And then just don't be a pussy and start trading higher size. If you're consistently, if you're consistently profitable and you're making winning trades, then capitalize on that, right? Otherwise, you're going to sit there, be a pussy. The market conditions are going to change. Your approach isn't going to be as successful. You are going to have missed the period of good success for you. Think in percentages. Do you long the breakout? Or would you rather wait for a retest of the previous resistance? I always long the breakout. The, basically, there's I, this question is one, is such a common question. It's such a such a common question. I get it all the time. Like, do you long the breakout? Do you wait for a retest? Like, everybody acts as though there is only one way to position in this market, and that is um, that is just taking a hundred percent of your position at once. If you like, just think about it for a second. Right, just stop and think about it for a second. If you want to play a breakout scenario, but you're not sure if there's going to be a retest, take fifty percent of your entry. You take 50% on a breakout, you add the remaining 50% if you get a retest. That way, if the market just takes off and doesn't give you a retest, then at least you have 50% skin in the game. And you can choose to add higher, should you wish to, and depending on what the targets of the trade are. But at least then you're not frozen out and sat on the sidelines, you know, with your thumb in your ass thinking about what you should have done through that region. So you always have to adapt. You always have to do something, you know, when the market is giving you a clear signal. You don't have to just position 100%, split it into two. How do you decide on what pairs to take? Um, volatility percentage moved is usually a really good indicator. So what are the aggressive markets on the day? Um, so anything that is, you know, high, just filter by percentage change. And then start looking at what some of the stronger moving markets are. And then start basing your thought process around some of the stronger moving markets on the day, especially if you're intraday trading. It's one of the better ways that you can view the market. So I'll be back on uh, I'll be back on Sunday night. We'll cover off the data that's going to be coming out over the next couple of days and the Powell talk on uh, on Friday. So we'll cover off that and see what the the price action is like after the weekend. Um, I'm going to go score a hat trick now in football. And I wish you guys the best of luck with your trading and good luck out there. Remember the important levels that we've drawn today. We've actually been quite focused on the lower time frames, which I think has been super helpful. So you've got some really nice hourly levels, 15 minute levels. You've got some really nice breakouts. You've got some really simple trades to take. Don't forget about those levels because if price starts to break underneath them and back inside the original ranges, then it's also going to set you up very nicely on the short side. So just as my dog starts barking.
I will leave you to it. Everybody, enjoy and good luck. Thank you.